Yo, ESPN might have another Sage Still situation, man. Um, this Malika Andrews chick is trouble. Um, last week on Twitter, when the whole Ime Doka situation came out, without any real details, very unprofessional the way Woj put that story out. ESPN had their insiders put the story out without any real information. All they said was that Ime Doga suspended for one year. We were like, what, huh, how, who, what, what did he do? So naturally, we a lot of people come to his defense. Stephen A. Smith was one of them. And you know something is wrong when people are taken up for Stephen A. Smith, of all people. And he had to go in on this girl, Malika Andrews, who came on first take and basically tried to take over his show talk all over him like she does everybody on her show nba today and he had to put her in her place rightfully so and i give Stephen a credit for doing that even though i don't agree with a lot of his thought process um this chick is one of those girls it's like sage still one of these you know half caucasian bras you see what kind of man she digging uh that it's almost like they put these type of women in place they're supposed to be moderators or host of a show. And they've always had eye candy girls on sports shows, you know, but a lot of these girls now, they, they have this pro feminist agenda that comes with them and they want to talk down on men in sports. to an audience full of men, like, what do you think the target audience is for ESPN men between the ages of like 15 to 55, it's not a lot of women with pro-feminist mindset watching that network. So if that's what you want to push, sweetie, go work for Lifetime or Oxygen or BET Her Plus or something. You're on the wrong platform for that. It's kind of like Molly Curl. Molly Curl, uh, Jalen, Jalen, uh, Jalen Rose girl, she be doing the same thing. I mean, I used to sit there and watch her interrupt everybody when, on first take to put her unwanted two cents in. And you could just read the body language from Max and Stephen A and all the fellas, like they're rolling their eyes. Like if this broad don't shut the hell up and go to the kitchen, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're not there to give your opinion. They are. You're there to be cute and open up the show with a monologue or whatever. And that's it. You know, if you want to preach your pro feminist stuff, get a podcast like everybody else in America. You know, now this chick back to Malika Andrews, you know, she's always, you know, getting into it with Kendrick Perkins or anytime a guy on that on one of these NBA players. And the only reason your show has credibility is because you have former NBA players on it. Kendrick Perkins, Vince Carter, whoever. Nobody's watching to see you. They're watching to see these former athletes give their opinions on today's game. Now, when the Celtics announced the suspension of Ime Udoka, this broad took it upon herself to basically trash and criminalized the new interim head coach as soon as it was announced. Last three seasons after spending the previous three seasons at Fairmount State. And he played for West Virginia between 2006 and 2011 and now could become the NBA's youngest head coach at 34 years old. And we'd be remiss not to also mention that Missoula was arrested twice at West Virginia, once in 2008 for underage drinking and aggravated assault. He pled guilty, paid a fine, and then again in 2009 for domestic battery after an incident at Morgantown Bar. The domestic battery case never went to trial. It was settled in August of 2009. He paid a $100 fine and court costs, plus had to do 40 hours of community service. Now, that was 13 years ago. He settled and paid both fines. So, Woj, why are the Celtics choosing him as their next head coach? So you see right there, she goes out of her way to put it out there. Oh, well, what about... His, mind you, his criminal history, and he did this, and he did that back in 2008. This is, I'm like, first of all, don't you think the Celtics haven't done a background check? You don't think the Boston Celtics know what this guy's criminal history is? Obviously, they feel more comfortable with him as the head coach than Ime Udoka, who allegedly was sleeping with the team's travel agent, who helped Nia Long, his fiance, relocate to Boston just a couple of weeks ago. They clearly feel more comfortable. They don't have a problem with this guy's criminal record. They think he's a good coach. He's good enough to be the head coach for at least a year. He's their bridge coach, their interim coach. You know, like, why do you feel a need to, to, to talk about his criminal record? Like, come on, man. You know, like, it's a certain thing. It's being on code. But certain stuff don't need to be said. I don't hear people bringing up Big Ben's criminal history when it's time to put him in the Hall of Fame or something. 
But when Richard Sherman came back after having that misdemeanor where he was drunk arguing with his family and it went viral last summer, when he made his debut for the Bucks last season, Michelle Tafoya on NBA, uh, NBC Sunday Night Football, the first thing she says, oh, Richard Sherman's back for the first time since his misdemeanor aggravated assault charge. I'm like, they always do this with black athletes it's not, and black coaches also. That's why Stephen A. was so defensive of Ime Udoka. And she tried to make it, oh, no, we're not going to go there with this. And he's like, oh, hold up, sweetie. You ain't going to disrespect me on my show. You could take that on your show that nobody watches. You know, NBA Today. The, and I think yeah, I think she was, 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 did she replace Sage still? Or did she replace uh, Rachel Nichols? I think Rachel Nichols was on the jump. But they got so many useless shows on that network now, I don't even watch it no more. It's basically like eight different shows and they all talk about the same shit, just different hosts. That's the only thing. You're just getting a different opinion on the same topics all day long. Yeah, I mean, different people, different views, but same topics are being discussed. And, um, you know, this girl, like I say, she is what she is. She's born in 95. I don't argue with people born after 95. Half of y'all don't know how to write cursive. Yeah, but this chick is a mess. And they gonna have a hard time trying to get rid of her on that network. <laughs> Somebody. But like I say, they put these type of broads on these networks now specifically to push these pro-feminist agendas. And I'm like, that's not the, the demographic that's watching your show. You know what I mean? The, most of the people that are watching your show are dudes that could give a damn about what you're talking about, sweetie. So maybe you need to go to another network, you know what I mean? Or just do your own podcast or whatever. But uh, very unprofessional with her. And she's just the type of chick that's just, she's dead. She's doing her job. It's like in wrestling, you got your bad guys, your baby faces, your heels. She's a heel. And that's the job that they've given her. To go out there and be a pain in the ass and be that girl that everybody hates. And right now, she's doing that. But let me know what y'all think about Malika Andrews, um, this chick on ESPN, and her view process.